happens. All rise and shout. <laughs> it's time for What's Trending. It's the beginning, we just got started. The level of competition and just the expectations were higher here. It was a good day to compete. It's the beginning, we just got started. Working day in and day out, pushing myself every day. It's the beginning, we just got started. Day one from Big 12 football pro days is in the books. Spencer, what stood out on day one? It begins with Aiden Robbins, and I know that his numbers, albeit unofficial numbers, because we still haven't received official numbers from the league, but we're going to run with the unofficial numbers we have. When you look at what Aiden did, nothing is like eye-popping for sure until you consider his size, Jerem. He, he told me yesterday that he weighed in at 237 pounds. He's 6'3". He's more lean than he has been. So he's like, my weight is the same, but I feel stronger. I've built muscle. And he says he feels quicker. And the 4'6 that he ran, that's the same time that Tyler Algier ran. But Aiden is a much bigger back than Tyler Algier, both taller and in weight. And so he's hitting that speed, and he told me, I'm regularly hitting low four fives on a faster track, like the one at BYU. Spongier turf here, slower numbers for all of the players here. So the fact that he hit four six at his size, people are very impressed. The scouts that saw Aiden Robbins were impressed with his just physical appearance. And then to have those numbers at his size, very, very noteworthy. Isaac Rex, speaking of impressive physical appearance, he looks clearly leaner and faster, and he's finally healthy. He gave himself a C grade yesterday. He was frustrated, but again, Isaac's tough on himself. I know that people are going to give him a shot because of his always impressive hands. He's a smooth route runner. He's, he has an amazing catch radius. Those were on display as well. That really stood out to me. And then Cam Garrett, we'll hear from him later in the program. Jeremy, he looked fast. He ran an unofficial 4.47 on a slower track. Both he and Eddie Heckard feel like they can be lower than 4-4. Like they can, they're in the 4-3s, they believe. So I thought Cam looked fast. I thought he looked really, really good in all of the drills. And it, it just, Jay Hill, I think, said it best. Like when he was re responding to the uh, unofficial time and video that I sent out, he said, draft him and you'll love him. So couldn't agree. I thought Cam Garrett really did himself some favors yesterday uh, on getting onto some NFL scouts' radars. And he feels like the prototypical undrafted free agent guy that could end up on a practice squad a la Caleb Hayes. You're a great athlete. There's a spot for you in the NFL. And uh, Cam Garrett running a sub 4-5, a 4-4-7 certainly helps there. Deion Smith, by the way, his broad jump of 10-5 would have been tied for fourth among running backs at the NFL Combine. So he thrived, yeah. especially in that space. Um, and, and what the broad jump means for uh, your ability to explode and to, uh, you know, in the case of a running back, kind of leap through a hole perhaps, uh, not in the broad jump way, but it shows the explosiveness in a bit, in a way. I, I like you, was impressed with the Aiden Robbins 4-6, uh, uh, unofficial. Why aren't they official, by the way? Why are we having a combine if they're not official? Can we lazy this so we just know? I am confused why it's not official and easily known. But a 4-6, unofficial is really impressive at 237. This is a dude that is one of the biggest backs BYU's ever had. In fact, he probably is, right? A, a regular starter who's run for over 100. There's no one as big as barefoot, six foot two, 237 pound Aiden Robbins who weighed in at that, as you mentioned yesterday. Uh, Isaac Rex, he's got great hands. That's gonna be his number one asset. Um, he's not gonna blow you away per se with, with speed or, or power but his ability to just catch the ball. He comes from a long line of not only in his family, but BYU tight ends. We're opening this to the next Matt Bushman, where he can be on a practice squad and dabble in the 53 a little bit, and if healthy, get a shot. So that's pretty interesting. Would have liked to have seen Eddie Heckard participate. You mentioned that he's recovering from a foot injury from the season, so he just held meetings with teams. No, no official or unofficial results from how those meetings went, but uh, we will hear from Eddie Heckard coming up. Uh, in one of the four conversations you had yesterday with those guys. So I'm looking forward to it, man, which brings us to tomorrow's participants, which are Ryan Rico, Paul Miley, Jackson Cravens, Atu Naisamahe, Max Tooley, A.J. Vangpacha. Who are you looking forward to seeing perform tomorrow the most? I can't wait to watch Max Tooley specifically run because he told me he feels faster than he's been in a long time. You heard mm. my conversation with him yesterday if you watched the show. Max feels like he's the fastest that he has been maybe in the last three years. 
So I can't wait to watch him run the 40, watch him do his L drills, and see his uh, side-to-side lateral quickness. I, I want to watch Max very closely because I feel like he's a guy that could pop up. I mean, I feel like maybe he's been largely unnoticed and has been under the radar. I mean, we talked to Cam Meller, who's a longtime friend of the program and an NFL draft expert. He, he would consistently bring up Max Tooley and say, look, he's a guy that he fits the mold of all these BYU linebackers that maybe that don't, if they don't get drafted, they still end up as, you know, undrafted free agents. And then all of a sudden they're in the league and they're on rosters or they're on practice squads. Like Cam Melder feels like Max Tooley can be that next undrafted BYU guy that is on an NFL roster. And I'm telling you what, with the increased spotlight, even though it's a quieter environment and it's strange and we have no official times, there are a lot of scouts here. I can yeah. promise you that. I see them all doing it. through the arena. A lot of faces. A lot of faces here at the same time. And there will be more than a few that are going to be impressed with Max if he does what he says he's going to do. And that is he runs some really fast times. Like, he feels like he can be in the four fives. Jeremy, if he's, he's in the yeah. four fives... Like, come on. Like, that, that's going to impress for sure. So I, I'm probably most looking forward to watching him play. And then A.J. Vong Pachan is another one of those guys that's just, like, in the right spot at the yeah. right time and always making plays. And his film is, his film is going to speak loudly. What can he do to supplement what is on film right now from the BYU transfer linebacker? So probably the linebacker is where I put most of my attention. How about you? By the way, uh, if Max runs a sub 4-6 and he's in the 4-5 somewhere, only seven linebackers at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis ran in that space, right, out of about 15 dudes. Max Tooley's the one for me, super athletic. I talked yesterday about how I think maybe he could transition to safety if he's fast enough, right, because kind of a lighter linebacker. Granted, in this era, you don't have the 250-pound 50 pound backer as much. It's a lot of sideline to sideline guys. Vong Pacha is interesting to me. He just has too much production not to at least get a good look. He had 307 tackles in college, 26 and a half TFL, seven uh, sacks. The dude uh, flies around. He needs some good measurables today. And then uh, I think he's going to be a guy that impresses in those interviews. Uh, obviously, a lot of character from the BYU guys traditionally. So I'm, I'm excited to see what AJ can do because. He came to BYU to get an increased look, an increased exposure in a Power 5 conference on national TV a little more, and I think he did a tremendous job last season. Um, and so I, I'm interested uh, with him as well. Can a Paul Miley, Jackson Cravens, Atu Mahe do a little something to get a look somewhere as well? Um, and then Ryan Rico, I'm interested to see what he actually does because he doesn't need to do any of the measurables per se. Yeah, but uh, yeah. he can just punt again if he wants and meet with people. So we'll see because Ryan Rico appears to be BYU's uh, next best prospect <laughs> outside of Kingsley Suamatia, which yeah. speaks to my love of Rico a couple years ago when I said, hey, he's the best player on the team in his <laughs> position. No, it, and Tyler Algier was amazing at the time, right? But it's, it's fun to see that BYU's got a couple of guys in the mix. And if you want to compete and be good in the Big 12, you need to have NFL guys. And so hopefully this, this crop of guys includes Kingsley and several more that stick as either late draft picks or free agent signing type of guys because I don't know that BYU is ever going to compete for Big 12 titles if they don't have several guys a year in this mix. Yeah, I'd like to have uh, the scenario continue where BYU is putting multiple guys into the league, whether it's through, draft picks are awesome, okay? Not, like, I would love to have BYU get at least two guys drafted because then that would mean 11 draft picks in the last four seasons, which is almost three per year. That's incredible and a stark contrast from what BYU was doing largely at the end of the Bronco Mendenhall era and even in the early years of the Satake era. Like, if we could see two draft picks, that, that would be super beneficial. But whatever, if it's one and then you have a couple of guys that make rosters and get onto practice squads, they're, they're still in the league. And then we're just pointing to the overall number. Ryan Rico is going to be on a team. I believe he will make a roster. And I don't know how much he can improve his stock tomorrow. I feel like him, if he decides to punt and go through all of the drills, it will just solidify what he already is, which is late sixth or seventh round projection as a punter. So, again, I don't know how much he can raise his stock, but he can certainly put a stamp on 
like what he's already done in Indianapolis and be like, see, I'm just validating again what you already know about me. I'm awesome. I've got a huge leg and I'm going to I'm going to be super consistent. I'm versatile in my ability to kick different types of punts and pin teams deep in territory like he, he can be a weapon for a team. So that'll be fun to watch tomorrow as well if he decides to go through all the drills. And you'll have complete coverage of that, and we'll talk about it on Monday's BYU Sports Nation. Opinion for later. We'll discuss it later. Two picks for BYU. Not enough. Not enough. Need that to be in the three or four range. We'll discuss that later.